The thing that I love about the Autel drones is that the general flying app is the same one that you use for mission planning. So I'm going to show you how to use the mission planning feature today. So I go straight into the mission planning option and I have a choice of creating a waypoint mission, a rectangular mission or a polygon. And if I previously created any, they will appear down the bottom here for me to manage and revisit. Today I'm going to go straight into the polygon. This is the one that gives me the most flexibility. So I jump straight into the satellite viewing option. Now you can change to see a, a hybrid or a topographical map, whichever one you prefer to map on. But I generally like to work on the straight satellite data, which is called GPS in here. So what I'm going to do today is to zoom into an area. This is one of my local beaches and I'm going to create a mission plan around here. So I simply just click where the plus is. So you'll see it's automatically dropped this square area of, of flight lines. So the blue lines are where the drone is planning to fly as it goes backwards and forwards. Now because my drone isn't actually connected, I don't see any visual from the camera here. So I'm just going to click on the arrow just to remove that. It just takes up a little bit of real estate that I don't want there when I'm at planning. Right, so let's jump right in and think about how we want to plan this mission. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer and then start to look at some of the parameters that I have available to me down on the bottom left here. So as I tap into that, you'll see that it's automatically defaulting to a 60 meter altitude. Now maybe that's okay, it totally depends on the amount of detail and area of coverage that you need to get. So you'll see that this altitude is linked to the ground sampling distance, which is at 0.77 centimeters per pixel at that particular altitude for this drone. So I can change this altitude just by tapping on it. And you'll see I can do that through either moving the scroller or actually typing in through here. I find I have a little bit more control if I actually type in the number there. So I'm going to increase the altitude to 80 meters for the area that I want to cover. And as I do that, you'll see that it automatically changes the amount of spacing between these flight lines to cover the area. And also bring your attention to the fact that it's automatically changing the centimeters per pixel ground sample distance there as well. And just as a rule of thumb, I do like to keep with 80% overlap and 80% side lap, just to keep it nice and simple. So that one I am going to go in and change it just slightly. Now this always depends on the actual environment that you're interested in, and it does take a little bit of planning and experience to work out what's the most efficient for you. Because as you'll see, that when I do change that side overlap, obviously my flight lines get a little bit closer together, which means it's going to take me longer to do that flight. And you can actually see on this upper right hand side here, it's telling me it's 22 minutes and it's also telling me how much of an area it's going to cover and the number of photos that it takes. Now I know that 22 minutes is a little bit longer than what I want to plan for. So I'm going to need to alter some of my parameters or otherwise change the area where I'm planning to fly. So let's just continue to move along these parameters here. You'll see that this, this is just all about the gimbal and the angle that the camera is going to face and that's perfectly fine. I do want it nadir or directly down. And then what do I want to do when it finishes the mission? And so you have the option for it to either go home or just hover in place and then manually return it for yourself. I do like it to automatically return home or at least start that just in case for whatever reason I've lost connection. But then I do like to take over and manually fly it myself. All right, so now that I've got all of those parameters set up, I'm going to cross out over here and then come back in and I'm actually going to need to change this flight area. So first of all, I need to get it into a smaller area so that I decrease this 22 minutes. I'm gonna aim for around 15 minutes. So I'm just picking up those corners and moving that and you'll see it's automatically changing this as we go. Now if I want to move it out a little bit, maybe I need to add in another point, I can just grab these little plus signs as I go along and move those to, to alter my flight plan. Now what you want to keep in mind is that you do want it to be as close to rectangular as you possibly can get and have at least three parallel lines to make sure that you get a really good outcome when you create your author mosaic after you've flown. 
Now the one other thing that you can do with this is if, if you like this flight plan but it's just not quite in the right place, you can just click in the middle here and pick it up and move it to an area where you're happy to move it there. When you've finished adjusting your settings and you're happy with the flight plan that you've created, I recommend you give your flight plan a name. So just tap into the edit option down here and type in a name that suits you and is memorable and click OK. Once you've done that, any other changes that you make, you can always continue to use the save button down the bottom here. And of course, if you do want to clear the entire mission, use the delete button. Now, when you're ready to go ahead and fly, all you're going to do is to connect up your drone, do your pre-flight safety checks and click on the blue flight button here. It's going to upload the mission and go through a series of checks to make sure you've got GPS connectivity, all that sort of stuff. And then you'll get ready to fly. I like to take off manually first, get the drone in the air, up and out of the way and into safety, and then press this button and off it will go. And again, I like to bring it home manually. Good luck setting your mission plans and I look forward to seeing your data on GeoNadir.